The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 583 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's a pianist, a teacher, and also a blogger, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Kimberly Kong. Kimberly, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more by yourself to the listeners. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, Sheena. I'm really excited for today. So I am a Korean American and I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm currently living in the DMV area, (laughs) not the DMZ. So that's DC, MD, and uh, VA. And I'm working to complete my doctoral degree at Peabody in piano performance. And I'm actually getting a second master's in music history as well. So to tell you a little bit more about myself, I graduated from Juilliard and Peabody for my um, master's and my bachelor's, and I've been blogging since 2009. So I actually have two blogs. One's a lifestyle blog, and the other is a food blog called Nomtastic Foods. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Kimberly, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Hmm, That's a tough one because there are so many good ones out there, but... Right now, I'm really loving this quote by Brian Tracy. Whatever we expect with confidence becomes our own self-fulfilling prophecy. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? To me, self-confidence is knowing what your so-called flaws are and embracing them fully. It's acknowledging that they exist and flipping them so that your so-called weaknesses actually transform into strengths. Thanks for sharing that. And I think, you know, it's important important to, you know, recognize our flaws and love them at the same time. You know, we're so great at kind of like criticizing, you know, our flaws and our weaknesses, not realizing, like you mentioned, it could be our greatest strength, right? It's just learning to utilize it in a way that helps us instead of hurting us. So I really love that you mentioned that. And Kimberly, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, growing up in suburban Pennsylvania, it was actually really tough. There were like five Asian people in a school of a thousand plus. So it wasn't easy for me. Bullying was an everyday occurrence. And, you know, my self-confidence was at an all-time low, if I'm being completely honest. Luckily, I had my music and, you know, it's probably not the healthiest thing per se, but it really helped empower me because I could let out all my negative emotions through, you know, my piano playing. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, what was that moment in your life when you realized, you know, you can go out there and do what you love, you know, being a blogger, being a musician, playing piano, what was that aha moment? You know, it's really tough to kind of just pick one moment, because I don't think there was one event or time where, you know, I feel like things changed. It was more of like a very long journey. And it's something that I'm actually still on right now. Thanks for sharing that. And I love how you mentioned how it's still a long journey, right? A lot of people think like, you know, once you have confidence, you have it all. But, you know, with confidence, it's like this up and down journey. It's like a roller coaster. One day you're 110% confident. The next day you're like 1% confident. But it's just like, you know, pushing through it, right? You know, keep going, you know, picking yourself back up when times are down. And, you know, because you've been in this long journey, what's your life been like now? You know, I have to say, like you said, there are a lot of ups, there are a lot of downs, but in general, I would say much calmer and much happier. And it's not like I wake up feeling super confident every day. Like you said, it's something that I practice daily. I know that sounds really weird, but you know, I'm human. So naturally I have doubts. I have my fears, but over the year I've learned to quiet my negative self-talk and prevail over whatever hardship comes my way. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I love how you mentioned you practice it every day, right? In anything that we do, we we have, you know, it takes practice, right? And it's like doing the daily, you know, the daily actions that really yield those big results, right? Just keep on putting in the work no matter what happens. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in your own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? 
Well, I have two things I do want to say. As a blogger who's very active on social media, like I just really want to take the time to stress that what you see on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter is, you know, that's not the whole picture. I think it's really easy to get down on yourself when you feel like the world is just succeeding around you. But you have to remember that the grass only seems greener on the other side and the key word being seems. People celebrate all their successes on social, which is great, and they should. But not everyone talks about their failures. You know, you don't see the thousand one no's they got in order to get that one yes. So don't ever let someone else's wins diminish your own value or discourage you from your own path. You know, we're all moving at different speeds. So don't ever fall into the trap of comparing yourself to others, even though that's difficult to avoid sometimes. And I want to stress that it's important not to seek validation from external factors or sources. You know, I'm here speaking from personal experience. I used to base my self-worth on my accomplishments and it was really unhealthy. If I reached a milestone, I'd like celebrate for a second and then think like, man, I would feel so much better about myself It was at, if I was at this next level when you know I was supposedly celebrating my victory two seconds ago. So don't base your happiness or your self-worth on your accomplishments, your money, your position, and so on and so forth because you know those are all superficial things that will fade in time because you'll always desire more. So just know that you, just plain and simple you, is more than enough. Thanks for sharing those great tips. And I love how you mentioned about, you know, that social media aspect. Because, yeah, you know, sometimes we go on Instagram and Facebook and we see the glory, but we never hear the story, right? And, you know, we all, some you know, like we, we look at these pictures and we're like, wow, why can't I be like them, right? And like you mentioned, you know, it may look picture perfect on the outside, but we never know what's going on on the inside. We never know the story, you know, that they're they're living and you know, sometimes you have to realize like, you know, those, those photos are filtered, right? It's not picture, you know, it's, it's, it's edited, like, you know, the life is edited. So it's not always a true life. And I'm not saying every, everyone's accounts like that, but there are some that are like that. And we just have to realize like, you know, we look at it and we take it for what it is and we kind of have to let it go and just focus on ourselves. So I really love that you mentioned that because I think that's something that most people actually you know, go through, right? So thanks again. And, you know, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your blogs, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, for sure. So my handle on Instagram, Facebook is Sensible Stylista. And then my website is sensiblestylista.com. And if you guys want to reach out on Twitter, just search for Sensible Stylist without an A that time. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Kimberly, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Kimberly's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really want to thank Kimberly today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Kimberly. Of course. Thank you. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.